Hi everyone, I'm Eric Cohn, and we're here to discuss a scene from The Sun. I'm joined by the writer and director Florian Zeller, Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, and Hugh Jackman. Thank you everyone for being here. So let's take a look at the scene. Ah, Beth, um, sorry Kate's just here to talk to me about um, Nicholas. We just found out he hasn't been going to school for almost a month. It's not only that, Peter. He's not well. He you need to speak to him. I don't know what to do anymore. You just, he needs you, Peter. You can't just abandon him. I'm not abandoning him. Why do you keep saying these things? Just... Okay. Look, the other day, I, I, I asked him to, I don't even remember what, take his plate out or something, and he just looked me um with uh with so much hatred i thought he, i thought he was gonna what he scares me okay <laughs> all right i'll uh I'll, I'll i'll go see him Tomorrow, I'll swing by at the end of the day. Thanks. One of the things that I think we should talk about with this scene is that you really get a sense of the full scope of what this film is trying to encompass dramatically. So, Florian, can you tell us about why you chose this scene to sort of establish the dynamic of the film? It is the almost the first scene of the film, and it's a long conversation. It's a long scene, but... Uh, somehow they don't say what should be said. And um, we see for the first time uh, Peter, Hugh Jackman's character, uh, with his uh, new life and the baby they have together, and suddenly his previous wife knocking at the door to ask for help. And so we see this man struck between you know, his past and his present, and we understand that is going to be about you know, how to deal uh, with the present and the past and the guilt that comes with uh, this kind of... Uh, complex situation in family. So, Hugh, can you talk a bit about figuring out what needs to be conveyed in this scene, given that there are so many different layers going on here? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, the movie itself really allows an audience to understand what it's like for everybody around someone who's going through a mental health crisis. So it's sort of fitting in this first scene that you have three of the major players who are having to deal with this crisis in one scene. And for my character, there's certainly a sense that there is a lot of unresolved history, I think particularly between Kate and Laura's character and mine. And as Florian said, there's, these characters spend a lot of time not saying the thing that's really, <laughs> that they want to say or that is on their mind. And so now, out of the blue, his uh, ex-wife comes and that's difficult for him because he's obviously trying to negotiate his wife and her feelings and the feelings of his ex. And then she's bringing up the a, a real genuine difficulty with their son, uh, which obviously becomes a crisis. So as the scene evolves, there's so many things at play and so many conflicting things going on inside of Peter. As an actor, it's a gift. It's a beautiful scene. And it happens in many scenes in this movie where there is uh, a desire for things to work out, but there's just so many conflicts and obstacles in the way. And that's why I thought it was interesting to shoot that scene you know, at the door, you know. Uh, we don't know exactly if we are inside, outside, and what is everyone's position. To me, the set here plays also a role to, to, you know, to describe without telling too much the dynamic and the difficulty of every character in this uh, triangle. And I think in terms of the very first conversation around our son and this human being's mental health crisis, she never is able to really say what's happening. And with, I think, a lot of shame and confusion, she admits that her own child is scaring her, which adds to blame and you feel all the expressions of the one thing we're not talking about, which is the actual need of the boy. Vanessa, in your, in your case, I'd love to hear a bit about what it was like for you to be sort of hovering on the outside of the dynamic between this ex-couple and obviously having a very key role to play in Hugh's character's life, but also realizing that this is something that you have to be aware of, too. I think that was the challenge for everybody is so much of what you're relaying on the external isn't actually what's true on the internal and 
that that was the position Florian was asking of all of us to be in because it's so much about how these humans can't express mm -hmm. something that's very true and deeply, deeply painful. And as Laura said, maybe, you know, shameful. Um, but if they had, what would have happened if they'd been able to? I think that's the question. And the reason why I wanted the film to start with that scene with the, the three characters in the landing is also because it's like a, like a red herring in a way, because it's, it's a lot about the divorce, it's a lot about the new family situation, as if it was the, the whole problem. But, and and uh, Nicholas, who is the, the teenager dealing with depression, uh, keep mention, keeps mentioning the divorce as the reason why he feels the way he feels. And because everyone feels guilty, uh, they all feel this is their fault because, you know, they probably did something wrong as a parent. Hugh, can you talk a bit about finding the right uh, kind of emotional level in this scene and throughout the film? Because on some level, there's a kind of a, almost a passive aggressive quality to this character where he's trying not to lose his cool, but at the same time, he knows he's lost a lot of control over the situation. Mm. So finding that kind question. of happy medium, you know, what was that process like for you? Uh, particularly at the beginning of the story, I see Peter as someone who f really genuinely believes he can compartmentalise his life, his work life, his son. I, I think it's beautiful the way it's set right at the boundary of his new life behind the door and you see him sort of go to close the door. I'm going to deal in this no man's land of the landing here, you know, outside the apartment with his ex-wife. And you see the beginnings of that unravelling. And then I think the beauty of the story, what Florian wrote is, Maybe the audience before him can see him, the water is rising around him. And even when he believes he's in control of it, it's, he's slowly going underwater. We made the decision not to rehearse and I felt strongly that it would be uh, more uh, interesting for all of us not to know before we are doing it what we were doing and to discover the emotions uh, on set. And uh, the fact that it's characters that are trying to control the situations and to fix the situations, I thought that not to be in control of the situation would allow all of us to be connected with these true emotions. It was really an extraordinary process to me to watch and to attend. Vanessa, I wanted to ask you about the process of listening and observing. And obviously you do a lot of that in the scene, but also a lot throughout the film. And I wonder what that process is like of just sort of making sure that you're not passively watching, but you're sort of actively processing the situation. I mean, it was my biggest challenge for sure to think something but not be able to express it and try to the best of ability not to betray it either because you have to be supportive. But that frustration, I think, becomes ours, I think, as a viewer, because sometimes we are also in that position. We want to say, don't do this or don't say that. And, and this is what I wanted the audience to experience because the, the beginning of that process is the, um, the conviction that there are so much ignorance and so much shame and guilt around these topics, mental health issue. And I really wanted, it was a, our way to open a conversation about it. And I wanted the audience to, to feel it from the, from the inside through, through your, your character. I wonder how acutely as actors you feel these emotions on set and bring yourself in and out of them. Being able to put yourself in the skin of a character like this must be incredibly challenging emotionally. And I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how you slip in and out of those feelings so that you don't obviously have to take them home at night in the, in the way that uh, these characters do. We took this yeah. movie home every single night, mm -hmm. didn't we? I mean, yeah. even when we tried not to, it was with us the whole yeah. experience because globally, we are in a mental health crisis. Yeah, I became more of a hot mess, I think, than I've ever been in my life. I wasn't sleeping very well. I, it, it was fascinating how it started to uh, affect me, more maybe than any other film that I've done. And I was with Hugh on that, on that last scene when he just breaks down. And I mean, Hugh went there so many times and every single take he would just go there. And it was just oh, a privilege. And all I could do was just try and hold space and, and be there. And I wanted to comfort him, you know, as the character and, and also me because he was so, so brave. It's just always such an honor to see someone go there with their work and then seeing the whole movie like that, it was just, it was really masterful. And Florian, what's it been like for you to, to watch the film with different audiences, knowing obviously what's in store, but also seeing the response from the, the crowd? I mean, the whole point of making a film is to share that moment with the audience. We are not doing a film just for ourselves, but to, to tell 
to tell something and to share something. So it's powerful to me to, to feel the audience responding because it's, it's a sad story, it's a tragedy, but it's not about trying to tell a sad story for the sake of telling a sad story. There is something, I hope, uh, cathartic about it and that make you remember that we are part of something bigger than ourselves, which is uh, humanity. And this is a bit what I felt uh, at Venice when we were all together with the audience really, I know, in connection with us, I would say. Well, thank you all for being here. It's a lovely thank conversation. You. Thank you very thank much. You.